Today we're going to film this Barnuminium and I'm going to tell you all about it. How are you up, Leroy? <laughs> Alright, so tell me why you're doing that, Leroy. Because the fireplace guy, the installer, installed this without putting out what he did inside. Hold on, cut! <laughs> <laughs> why are you fixing it? Because the fireplace guy left it like this. Right. No. Hurry up and just freaking tell me why you're fixing it, Leroy. Because there's a gap and the insulation cannot hit that pipe. Okay, thank you. We have to protect the insulation, or the pipe from the insulation, and the freaking fireplace guys, they're supposed to be, they're supposed to be professionals. This, this is one thing that really freaking pisses me off. You hire these professionals to do something, and then we have to come back behind them and fix all their crap, right? This, this is one thing that really, oh man, it upsets the crap out of me. So anyway, uh, especially in a barnuminium, you know, they may do okay in a house where it's just wood they cut around, it's no big deal, right? But in a barnuminium, especially our barnuminiums, it has to be done right. And they can't get it done right, so we have to come and fix it. So that's where Leroy comes in. Then after Leroy's done doing it, then I gotta fix it. <laughs> I'm joking. Leroy will get it right. <laughs> so six days later, <laughs> well, it looks pretty good. Nice and clean. Now, why couldn't why couldn't the the fire uh, fireplace guy do that? So, so Leroy, what did you put around it? Just some sheet metal. Some flashing, some twenty five gauge aluminum flashing, and then just I just pop ribbon in it and screwed it up to the top there to the perby. All right, and now the foam guys they get to the foam up to it, and uh, all is good. All right, man, good job. All right, let's go see what they're doing in here. These as well. Oh yeah, out. those are gonna cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? We need to cover these these trusses too. The trusses? Yeah. Okay. Because we those are gonna be painted, so try not to get yeah. anything on the Yeah, that, yeah. Pretty much anything for the most thing the part uh, we're gonna cover pretty much everything. Yeah, so uh, these trusses up here. Because if we get any overspray on it, it's gonna be yeah. hell for the painters to go and clean it off so that they can paint it, so. Right, right, no, so yeah, those, all those trusses need to be covered up. Yeah. So we don't get, we cannot get any foam on those yeah. things. Yeah, This one over here, that, that one's gonna be covered up with sheetrock. Yeah, that one we're gonna, okay. we're gonna sheetrock. Okay. All that's gonna get sheetrocked. Okay. Uh, and so is this one over here, okay. right here. Okay. So, the only thing, you don't have to cover anything here. Everything's, gonna, except for that electrical, yeah, box. For electrical box. Other than that, all is exposed. And like anything that's going to the outside. Do what? Any of the boxes that go to the outside, we go ahead and do it with some, some, some of the policy that we use on the windows. Okay. Just to make sure that whenever we shoot it with the phone, it doesn't shoot the out. Pressure doesn't shoot out that way. It's kind of already sealed at that okay. time. Okay. Perfect, man. All right, good deal. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do. This is all gonna get exposed insulation. So we're gonna do close sale on here. Everything in this home that doesn't get foam gets covered up. You know, here's the doors, the plugs, everything that doesn't get foam is covered in plastic. That foam sticks to everything. So everywhere you don't want foam, you better cover it. So make sure when you hire an insulator that they cover everything where you don't want foam. And if they ever tell you that it doesn't matter, that it's easy to take off, it's not. They're lying to you. Trust me, we know. So anyway, uh, these guys are doing a really good job here. <laughs> what? Oh, you said, all right, let's go see what they're doing inside. I, I put all my stuff back down. I was like, oh, he's talking to the camera. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> I, was, I was excited talking to you. You just walked off all fast. I was like, well, hold on. <laughs> I didn't realize, like, oh, he's talking to the camera. <laughs> Uh, Clayton Porter with ATX Thermal Solutions. We're a division of LCR contractors based out of Mesquite. Our office that we work out of here in Central and South Texas is in Hutto, Texas, and we service all of Central and South Texas with uh, residential spray foam. And we use Isonine product, which is uh, manufactured here in the United States. Uh, consists of a lifetime warranty transferable. 
uh, from house to house. Now, on our barn dominiums, we typically shoot the foam directly on the metal. It is this, you know, I've heard people say that it voids the manufacturer's warranty. I have asked the manufacturer directly. They say they do not void the warranty. Have you ran into uh, any of that where, where some manufacturers may void warranty on, on your product? The foam that we apply is not going to void any warranty on any material, especially metal barn dominions. Uh, it actually adheres better to the metal and actually can, can protect it from any kind of uh, moisture that could pass through it. Uh, it actually would help kind of hold the house together a little bit better than what you would think. Uh, but no, no, no warranty voids whatsoever with any manufacturers. Um, what about, you know, I've also heard that it's best to uh, spray, let's just say, an inch of closed sill and then spray some open sill on top. Is, is, is that the best way in your opinion or is it better just to go ahead and spray open sill? If we apply a, a closed sill to the wall and then you apply an open sill over it, it's not going to give the adhesion that's really recommended by the manufacturer. So the best way to actually attack that would be to actually spray the full two inch or three inch of the closed cell so you have one material on the wall. Uh, the reason is the closed cell is going to give you that vapor barrier and moisture barrier um, and if you apply an open cell to it, the closed cell creates a shell on the outside. So there's really nothing such as a tooth for it to adhere to. Um, the product comes out at 130 degrees or so Fahrenheit and when we apply hot foam over foam, it's not the best uh, apple application to uh, to get where you need to be. So the best solution there would be just to apply the right thickness with one material which would be either the closed cell or the open cell. So you're saying just apply one or the other, don't, don't do both? Correct. Okay, now tell us about this product that you have. Tell me a little bit about, about it more. So on this particular project that we're doing uh, for Texas Barn Dominiums, we're applying an open cell uh, which is 3.7 R factor per inch and we're doing that on all of the walls. We're putting three and a half inches in the walls and then five and a half inches on the roof deck. And then we're also applying a closed cell product, which is going to be in some of the areas that are going to be exposed where you'll be able to see it. The closed cell gives a smoother finish because of the, the, the thickness, the density of the material. It's uh, almost three times as dense as the open cell. So you'll have a smoother finish with the closed cell application as you would the, uh, the open cell. Uh, the reason is it's going to be you know, you're going to have a higher R value with the closed cell, but we don't get as much uh, coverage from, uh, from a set of material that we would on an open cell. You're still getting the same R factor, we just use less material with a, with a closed cell and you get a, a better looking finished product. So, um, when, do, when should we apply open cell, when should we apply closed cell? in your opinion, in, in a barn dominium? Sure, anytime you're going to have a, a closed off wall, such as sheetrock uh, is going to be ad adhered over to the studs or the purlins, you can do an open cell application because you're not going to see it. Anytime you're going to have an open area uh, that you're going to be able to see, we want to put in a closed cell. There's a couple of reasons. One, it has a smoother finish like I'd mentioned, and two, you're not able to stick anything in it as far as a finger or tools or anything like that. It actually is a dense, hard product that's uh, once it's cured it's a solid material. The open cell is a squishy uh, soft product on the inside so the biggest reason there would be the visual aspect of it that you're going to get from the closed cell versus the open cell. Okay so um, now what about price wise? What, 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 what does foam run typically price wise? Well we actually don't price it per square foot per se because there's a lot of areas we do a, a digital takeoff in each project that we're doing so we actually have the right amount of material going to the job sites and then also applying the right material in the right location so uh, we can't really price say you know per square foot with open cell or per square foot with closed cell uh, but it, the closed cell is going to run a little bit more because of the the board foot coverage that we get is not going to be as great as we would be with an open cell. Uh, we get about 16,000 board feet per set and each set is two 55 gallon drums of an A part and a B part and then we get about 3,600 board feet out of a closed cell set. So you can see the, the coverage area because the product actually ends up being more dense. Uh, we don't have the coverage so therefore the price actually is, is a little bit more with the closed cell. Okay well what about performance wise versus you know, let's just say some fiberglass insulation or, or any other type of, uh, you know, conventional insulation. You're going to have a higher, uh, R factor is determined in a, in a laboratory and R factor is determined through air passage and heat, heat transfer. So 
The foam is actually going to seal up any cracks and crevices where air can't flow through. So when you foam a house, you're going to have a tighter envelope and therefore also the air conditioning unit is going to be encapsulated in the foam because we foam the roof deck. So your, your energy efficiency is going to be greater because your air conditioning unit is sitting technically in, a, in an insulated space. So with the application of foam versus fiberglass, fiberglass is typically put on the attic floor so your AC unit is sitting in a hot attic and having to recirculate that hot air through the summer, summer months. So with this, the product that we use and application wise, the unit is actually sitting in that conditioned space so your difference between your conditioned space where you're living versus your attic is going to be between five to eight degrees so the efficiency you're getting out of that is sometimes between 50 to 60 percent reduction in energy bills if you were to go with a conventional fiberglass. Now another thing that I've heard obviously is how toxic foam can be. Uh, tell me, I mean, I know there's different types of foam. What, what, what is your foam like? So the foam we spray is isonine, uh, manufactured here in the United States. Uh, the manufacturer doesn't have any, well excuse me, the product doesn't have any off gases, CFCs, anything that's hazardous to the homeowner or to animals or anything of that nature. When we're applying the material, our, our sprayers are actually using masks to protect them from the foam being applied to, apply to, the, to the substrates. So when, <laughs> when we have a lot, of, uh, a lot of work going on. So when we do any kind of retrofit or anything like that, we always ask the, the homeowner to actually come back. Usually about an hour is what we like to say because that way it gives it a nice cure on, on the foam. There's no, there's no particles floating in the air because when it does come out, it's coming out of an air gun, uh, a mixing chamber, and then sprayed on the wall. So there are some floating particles in the air, but nothing hazardous to, to anyone as far as uh, any gases or CFCs. I mean, while you guys were spraying, we were all walking around in there, no mass or anything. I couldn't really smell anything. Yeah, there's a, the, the, there is a slight odor to it, though, um, just because of the material, but it's nothing toxic. Uh, it's uh, it's non-sugar based material as well. Uh, so there's no, uh, there's no mold uh, food sources or any of that nature that could actually come out from it. Um, but yes, it, you know, as they were applying it, we were able to kind of stand there. You were able to take some videos. Um, it's, it's a much safer product than people actually think of because of the way that it's applied. The safety precautions we take are for our guys that are working in there, just mainly the sprayers. But uh, as a homeowner, when, once the sheetrock is up and the home is completely done, there are no, there's no odors and it's completely safe. The foam, the residential foam and, and what's, it's evolutionized over the last you know, 10 years. It's becoming more and more popular with, uh, with homeowners and builders. Uh, the reason is because of the energy efficiency. With that, there's been an evolution of the product design. So in the beginning, there, you know, everybody's kind of nervous about how things are made. Uh, there was hazardous materials at one point where you couldn't come into a house for 24 to 48 hours because of either the off gases or the, the, the odor that was actually caused by it. So the development that we have with, uh, with the product that we use through isonine, they're constantly developing a better product and a much safer product, even though what we use is completely safe. Scientists are always wanting to come up with something better, so it's a uh, it, it is transferred it transformed into a much better uh, product than it was even five years ago. What about fire retardants? So the foam actually is not a fire uh, ignition. In other words, if you were to light it, it won't spread fire. It'll just melt. So we can apply a thermal barrier to any application. Uh, we apply what we call a product called DC three fifteen, which can go on. <clears throat> over the foam and that actually gives a 15 minute what we call an ignition barrier. So what that does is it blocks any fire or flame on the foam for at least 15 minutes or any uh, material that it's applied to. So the foam actually is not any kind of accelerant uh, as most people might think. It actually kind of helps uh, with the fire retardancy because it doesn't allow it to spread. So if a fire uh, was to catch in one of the cavities, say an electrical fire for example, um, it's going to melt around it. It's not going to spread through that cavity. A lot of times if you have uh, fiberglass with a craft back that has been held on there, that craft is paper and that can be an accelerant for the fire. So the foam actually eliminates all of those hazards as far as uh, any kind of accelerant. I wonder if uh, the air tightness would help in the case of a fire just because there's not so much oxygen. I mean even though the house has a lot of air in it though. So uh, fire needs oxygen to burn. Um, so if the, if the cavity is completely filled with foam, there's obviously no oxygen for it to burn, but there is 
If you have wood, that's a, that's a fuel and you need oxygen. So if you eliminate one of those, you can't have a fire. Uh, there's been no studies done, obviously, from uh, a house being foamed, catching it on fire to see how long it would take or what the, uh, the escape is, but um, it's a science that actually is applied to it. So we really take out one of the elements and you're eliminating any kind of spread of that. So if we were to, if we were to throw a match into that right now, if you had a bunch of combustible materials in there, that would be the only place it would burn. Uh, because everything that we're foaming inside of this house is covered with foam. And plus, the being the metal, metal doesn't burn as well as wood. Right. <laughs> so our foam actually has a lifetime guarantee, like I mentioned before, uh, that the product does not break down. <clears throat> what you run into with fiberglass is if you were to put cellulose or any kind of blown-in insulation in a cavity, you're going to have a cavity that's there, and you fill that up. Over time, that fiberglass is going to settle just based on gravity. And then you have an open air pocket. With the foam, it will never settle, it'll never uh, break down, uh, it'll be there for the life of the house. So that's another advantage of foaming a home, you're sealing it up completely and it stays sealed. And you also have the full insulation value of the cavity versus any kind of fiberglass that you put in there. Because as fiberglass is, it's a weighted material, it has nothing to stick to except for the studs that it was put against, and it does settle. So adding foam to any home is going to be a, a major advantage over fiberglass for you know not only the air penetration uh, but the the sound effect as well it blocks out sound a lot better than than fiberglass does uh, sound can't pass through the foam as well as fiberglass fiberglass is uh, fiber materials woven together and the foam is actually more of a solid material so if you think of a sound is based on waves it won't pass through it as much one more thing though, Eric, when you're doing, if you're building a house inside of the city limits, for example, you have to have an energy rating code. Uh, the foam actually adds a lot of points to that energy rating code. So you can cut down on your HVAC. Uh, maybe the uh, fiberglass unit would have required a three ton. With the foam, you can knock it down to a two ton. Um, it doesn't have, um, it, it actually adds value to the property as well. So any home that we have foamed is going to add value to that because of the energy savings and energy ratings that are applied to it. Uh, more consumers are getting more aware of what the foam is and the application of it. So uh, more and more new construction is being done with foam uh, for that very reason. Uh, when you go to resell a home and you're able to show it as a, as a completely foamed house, it adds value to it in that sense. Um, the poly seal we use is a closed cell, low expansion foam, and anything over door height, we always use a fire uh, proofing material as well. So any any wire holes, plumbing holes, any substrates that were drilled out, we seal those up completely so no, no air passes through. All right, so these guys have gotten quite a bit done today. As you can see, we're gonna do open sill on the wall, so they're doing all the open sill first, and then tomorrow they're gonna do the close sill on the, uh, on the roof. On this particular barnuminium, we're going to uh, spray close sill on the roof, and then we're gonna paint it black, and that's, that's gonna, we're gonna leave it like that. On the H HVAC duct work, we're gonna do exposed, so it's gonna have the very industrial look. It'll look really nice. Uh, but anyway, I mean, I, I wish, <laughs> I wish there was a way to sh for me to show you how much different it feels now versus what it felt like this morning before they sprayed this foam, and they haven't even sprayed the roof. It, it just makes a world of difference. So I can't be here tomorrow, but I'll probably be back next week, and I'll try to get you some footage of what uh, what the finished product looks like. Anyway, we'll see you next week. We are Texas Barnuminiums.